Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our Community Access. This week, we will visit with the new Oxford DDA. Then how about having a sick pizza? Then we went to an Oxford ribbon cutting. And finally, we went to a Frisbee golf tournament. All today on our Community Access. Welcome back. We have a brand new DDA in Oxford and a reporter, Alexis, visit with her with her Oxford F Social District. Alexis. Summer is barely here, but the DDA already has tons of things in order to enjoy the season. Ladies Weekend Out was great. It was kind of our kickoff to summer reopening the town and it was wonderful event put on by Ann at Funky Monkey and then Nicolette at Caveman and Pip and they brought the DDA in as that support system and that support group to kind of make everything run and they both did a wonderful job promoting it and getting women out here. We were able to launch Social District with the tap and with Victoria's that night so people were carrying their drinks up and down the street and they were really shopping. I talked to many of the business owners that night and they got a ton of foot traffic and it boosted their sales. So overall, it was a great event. Ladies night was a prelude into what the social districting zones would look like. So it was kind of nice to have a trial run in that soft launch before we launched all of it. And it was great. The people that I talked with on the streets who were coming out and grabbed their drinks, they really, they knew where to stay, what lines they couldn't cross. They understood that they couldn't come across M24, but they could utilize the front and back sidewalks on both sides. So they really enjoyed it, and it was really nice to see people walking the town. At the time of Women's Night Out, only two bars were running for the districts, but Westbrook was able to add three more to that list. So I was able to give the good news to three other restaurants today. So Homegrown Brewery, Red Naps American Grill, and then Gravel Capital all got their approvals from the state today. So as of right now, we have five that are activated and we're working on the other four. So they are pending and in the process. 24th Street and Sullivan's are the next to likely be approved first. So both sides of the street are open. The only rule is you can't cross over M24 because it is a state highway. So everybody can carry their drinks on the front sidewalks and around the buildings on the back sidewalks. They just can't go into the parking lot but they can cross over verdict here with their cups in hand. Okay. So if you're looking to come to the bars on one side of the street, just throw away your cup before you do, cross over and then grab a new drink when you come to the other side. There aren't many rules to follow when enjoying a social district, but there is one more to be aware of. Each individual restaurant and bar provides their own plastic cup with the logo of their restaurant. And then we come around and we give them this, that's a downtown Oxford sticker that has the social district logo. And then if you wanna know which establishments are involved, just look for this on the front of their building. So this is a decal that'll go directly on the front and back of their windows on the buildings. So if they have this on there, they're participating, you can ask for a drink and then come outside. Limits on drinks are pretty similar to other drinking rules. The bars and the restaurants are running it the same way. So you have to go to the bar to purchase something. That way it's safe. Uh, the bartenders know what the signs are to look at, just like they would if somebody was in the restaurant. And then they can take that plastic cup out. They can't take glass or anything. And then uh, Chief Solwald and our police department are completely on board. You might see them on foot on a bike a little bit more often, just so they can be checking in. But it's really, I think it's gonna be great for this town. Oxford Police Chief Solwold believes the same. From what I've seen in, in, in the years that I've worked here, we've got a lot of responsible folks that, that, uh, that live in town here and commute to downtown businesses. Yes, you're gonna get a few that are gonna be, that are gonna test the, the, the waters per se, but, um, but that's what we're here for. Uh, that's why you have to have rules and regulations, you know, so it's gonna be up to us to make sure that we bring those folks back in you know and say hey let's let's not spoil it for the rest here and uh, let's get you back to uh, uh, what the rules are 
implementing the rules didn't come easy. And what we did is we really studied the other towns before we launched this, making sure that we took the precautions and that we knew what we were doing. Actually, on each quadrant, there will also be a sign that says you're entering the district or leaving the district. So there will be parameters so that people don't go too far or they don't leave the district. One of the perimeters includes Centennial Park, where concerts in the park is held. But other exciting things are coming as well. Yeah, we're super excited to launch our first farmer's market. So the DDA um, has reached out to many of the farmers and a lot of the local businesses here because they have a lot of offerings that would fit really well into a farmer's market. So we are launching that Thursday the 17th. It will run every day that we have a concert in the park. So all the way through August 12th, the only date that we're staying away from is July 1st because a lot of people get away for that weekend. So 4.30 to 6.30, and it's gonna take place in that empty parking lot down on 15 North Washington, which if you're at Funky Monkey and you're looking at Funky Monkey, it's right to the right-hand side. So we tried to keep it really a true farmer's market. So we're not getting into all the arts and crafts, clothing, things of that nature. It's more food-based, essential oils, um, a lot of herbs, gardening things, plants. Um, the exciting thing is, is we found a organic farmer out of Metamora that's well known at a couple of the farmers markets around here. And he is bringing meats, cheese, eggs, honey, fruits and vegetables. Um, Simple Organics is bringing a lot of their merchandise. Hillary over here at Apothecary is bringing a lot of hers. So we got some local people involved. It's really all local. So I think it'll be a really great time. So let me show you one of the speaker systems over here connected to the pool. So it's right up here in front of Johnston's Photography. And the nice thing is, is that these are all wireless. So they will crisscross all the way down the street and then into the park. So even before concerts in the park starts, you'll be able to come out to the park, um, maybe grab some food, sit down and enjoy music until the concert starts. We're gonna be able to utilize this around Christmas time with Christmas music. On weekends, we'll have it going. I get to make the playlist, so let me know. Give me a shout out if you want something specific. But I think it's a really great thing just to get the community here and moving around the town. Plans are in place so that no one will be disturbed by the speaker systems or districting zones. Yeah, so we're definitely going to be cognizant about when we run the music, not having it too late or too early in the morning. So many people live in the apartments above the stores here, so we do want to uh, make sure that they're not disturbed that way. So we will cut it off, you know, usually by nine o'clock latest, um, but it's not going to be blaring out to where the homes around here can hear it. Hopefully it's just enough that people will enjoy it while walking. From the intoxication standpoint, we don't feel like it's going to be bothersome. Um, and the only reason why is because we've looked at these other towns, we've talked with them, we asked about this concern and what they've experienced. They're not having any troubles there. It'd be the same thing if somebody went into the bar and had too, many to, too much to drink. We're really leaving it to the restaurants and bars to decide if somebody has had enough or not. New initiatives are coming to the downtown area as well. Um, and the other thing is, is July 8th is family night. And one thing I did in back in January is I went to social media to try to figure out what do people really want to hear? What kinds of bands are people into? And family night really came up in, in a lot of people's responses to me. So instead of bringing out a concert that maybe plays kids music and wouldn't appeal to the whole family, what we did is we hired a magician. So this magician has done quite a few shows for 5-1 Diner and taken place in the park. So he'll be out here and what we're going to do is we're going to have um, balloon animals and face painting and Caputo Salon is going to do hair braiding and we're just going to really activate that around families and really have a good time and see if we can get some of the younger ones involved. High School Athletic Director Jordan Ackerman is the first performance at concerts in the park. So if you looked at some of the other towns that activated, they did some really cool things during the fall and winter months, um, putting out their heaters that we got from the restaurant uh, grant relief program or putting up bonfires and having them utilize them outside. So I see this as all seasons. Um, we are going to run it from 12 in the afternoon all the way to 10 p.m. at night and it's going to be activated every night of the week. In addition to the social districting zones, this area is also going to be in good use. This is the new farmer's market. Reporting in Oxford, Alexis Ware, Oxford Community Television.
Good job. Next, Alexis visited with the new pizza store in Oxford, the Sick Pizza Store. Again, it's Alexis. If you've ever been to Vendetti's Pizza, well, you know exactly where it's at. Sick Pizza right here in downtown Oxford. They've been open for a few weeks and the owner says business is booming. Right now, I'm actually in the process of hiring a prep crew um, because as of right now, we're, we're spending all our time making the food or prepping the food and making the food and not so much time managing the actual business. That's because Scott Taylor and Sick Pizza have hit the ground running. Business is booming and it hasn't slowed down. The past two weeks we've been closed Sunday and Monday. Um, that's kind of for rest, for being able to restock, recharge, um, being able to keep putting out the best product. Uh, it seems that downtown Oxford is pretty sleepy on Mondays and that's okay. Like, it, if, if that's when downtown Oxford wants to sleep, I'll sleep too. Um, but the ultimate goal would be to be able to be open. And, and that would be um, a staffing thing. Um, not that we've had trouble getting staffing. It's just, you know, when you hire 15 people at the same time, you know, you're, you're training them all at different skill levels. Um, now I've, I've just, I found a couple awesome, awesome um, food prep, professionals that that's what they've done you know for the considerable amount of their career so they're starting this week so um, the ultimate goal would be to just be able to stay open like we originally planned the original plan was seven days a week but as of right now the pizzeria is open five days for sure we are open from four to ten every day yeah. from Tuesday to Saturday um, and anything additional and also Tuesday we're going to be open at lunch for 11 to 2. As far as scheduled days, you know, we're just we're trying to we're trying to get into a rhythm so people know exactly exactly when we are open. I don't want to be a place that's like, oh, they're they're probably not open. It's right now Sundays and Mondays we're closed. Is it so? Because of the overwhelming response we've received from the community, um, this place doesn't have the capacity to be open that long without the prep during the day. And it's not really large enough to be doing the prep and cooking major amounts of food at the same time. There's just not room for that many people in the kitchen. So we had to decide, starting out, what we're going to do is we're gonna be open for dinner. So we're gonna be open four to nine. Um, the first couple days, we, we went with phones and online ordering and everything, and it was, too much it, it was we just it, we didn't have the capacity to service people um, so the the POS system that we do have the point-of-sale system allows us to um, control how many orders come in every 15 minutes so we have bumped that up gradually so we're doing considerably more but um, so right now we're doing online ordering only the only way that we could truly service people and service you know, 120 orders a day is was was using this system. Um, people can walk in and order pizza. That you know, it might be a 40-minute wait. It just depends on where that falls on how the tickets fall. Um, it's allowed us to make a consistent, great product throughout and stay busy. So um, bear with us on the challenges because. Um, we just, what we didn't want to do is just start slapping pies out because what we're going to be known for is the best pizza and it's all fresh, fresh, fresh. The freshness includes their pizza, salads, breadsticks, and much more. You can see them all at sickpizza.com. Literally, when you go to the website, you click on it and it's actually the order page. So if you want to look at it, just hit order now. You can. You can go around in there and see everything that's that we have to offer. Um, we we do we did start out with um, a whole subline submarines, and we we just had to we had to kind of shelf those right now just because of the prep time, the fact that we're not really open for lunch. But I am announcing that um, this Tuesday uh, we are going to open for lunch on Tuesdays. So. Our goal is to make, it's, it's more for the downtown area and businesses that Tuesday's pizza day. So I'm gonna staff, like a nighttime staff, 
and we're gonna see how that goes for a month. Um, and if it gets to where it's busy and it's working and we end up, you know, I don't know where it's gonna go from there, but I couldn't do it all in at the same time just because there's not the time, there's not the space. It's just, the again, the response has been so overwhelming and I don't wanna stifle that because it's awesome and that's why we do this. Um, I'm just about double what I thought we were gonna be to start, which is awesome. It's the best, the best issue ever. Um, but you know, we're just we're we're trying to make it so there's never a total inconvenience for anybody or somebody's orders just get kiboshed like you were saying. Um, you know, we'll never do that. We're, we're not gonna say, hey, we can't do these tickets because we're too busy. Um, we're only taking the tickets that we can make and that we can make properly. Opening for lunch is exclusive just for Tuesdays. As long as we're doing the volume of pizzas, salads, and bread that we are right now, um, I, I don't foresee lunch coming in full time for a little while. Um, maybe when the kids go back to school, um, but right now it's a busy summer. Downtown is bustling every night and um, there's constantly people walking and it's, it's great, people walking in and you know, we're playing music and it's it's just great. I mean, it's it's the downtown experience that you never think you would find unless you're, like I said, in Royal Oak or up in Traverse City. But it's really hopping here with the with the, the breweries and um, Sullivan's and and 24th Street and the Tap and just it's just it's a great place. The downtown area and camaraderie was a major selling point for this Orion native. I'm number one about community and the fact that. On Thursday night, there's a farmer's market and there's the stuff going on in the park and there's people walking around enjoying a beverage and, and it's just awesome. It's, it's, it reminds me of a Ferndale or a Berkeley or a Royal Oak. And um, I wanted to be part of that. I, I didn't want to just be in a plaza where people just pull up and get their food. Um, you know, we've got some pub tables in here where people can come in and sit down and eat with their family. Um, we don't necessarily have table side service or anything, but you know, you're welcome to eat in here. We've got, um, we're trying to uh, focus on all Michigan products. So we're selling Fago and Town Club and um, working on a couple other things that we've had some hurdles with our beverages, but I think we got them straight today. Um, but, you know, um, with, with everything from COVID, you know, we're, we're dealing with, with trucking crises and, and different things like that. So there's been some hurdles that I didn't necessarily um, anticipate, but uh, I think that pretty much we've gotten through all of them. Sick Pizza is always hiring new members. At the Facebook page, they can send me a private message that just says, um, hey, I'm interested in working, this is my experience, or um, a lot of people have, have inquired about as far as kids and ages. Um, our age is 15. Unless you're my kid, you can be 14. That's that's the rules. Um, uh, always hiring. I we've hired. I've got six kids that are going to school, going to college. So um, I've been very fortunate to have a very great uh, group of friends, and the majority of the kids that are here I've known since they were babies. So the other day I was standing making pizzas, and I was like, man, I was at his first birthday party, and. There's my kid, I was at her birthday, you know. Um, so, always open for applications, um, experiences plus. When it comes down to it, Taylor really just thinks of one thing, gratitude. I'd like to thank everybody for supporting us so far. Um, I know that it was a little rocky the, past, the first couple days. Um, hopefully if you've come back and given us another chance, you'll see that, um, you know, all our reviews on Facebook and on Google are, are awesome. We got two bad ones. We try to make everything right. Um, this, is, this is my career. This is what I want to do. Um, this is what I love. Um, I'm working with my family and my partner's family. And it's just, um, it's a passion of ours. And hopefully you'll taste that in the food. Um, every picture I've put up of the food has gotten hundreds of likes. So I put some pictures of the salads up yesterday for the first time and people thought, where's that at? You know, so um, just kind of giving little teasers. Um, I'm not a big professional photo shoot person. Any photo you see is on my iPhone. So um, I think that good food speaks for itself. Fresh food, fresh vegetables. We cook all our meats. Um, no pellets. That's kind of my 
I wanted to put up on the wall, no pellet zone, but a lot of people don't get that. But there's no sausage pellets or beef topping or bacon topping. It's, it's bacon, it's beef, seasoned beef that we, we make from, from scratch and, uh, and ground sausage. So um, I think that you will, you will see the difference and you will taste the difference and just give us a shot. Well, that's it at Sick Pizza, but there's still tons more to come, including special giveaways when it comes to their logo stickers and merchandise that can be found at baileyracing.com. Reporting in downtown Oxford, Alexis Ware, Oxford Community Television. Sounds great. Next up, we went to the Oxford ribbon cutting for Michigan United Credit Union. Let's watch. Well, welcome everyone. I am Amy Dezatel, the Executive Director of the Oxford Chamber of Commerce, and I'm so glad everybody could join us today. Uh, thank you everyone for coming out at the all new Michigan United Credit Union, formerly Lakes Community Credit Union. Uh, let's give them a warm welcome. Uh, please take a moment and if you would, let everyone know that you are here today by checking in on Facebook and even giving them a uh, good review, if you would. Um, the Oxford Chamber of Commerce appreciates the support of our local TV station being here, OCTV. Thank you so much. Um, today, we are celebrating the merger of three credit unions, uh, Birmingham Bloomfield, Metro North and Lakes Credit Union. Uh, they have a new name, but the same commitment to excellence. Uh, I would now like to introduce Jim Baylor to tell their story. Jim. Thank you, Amy. Um, as Amy said that uh, this site was formerly Lakes Community Credit Union. Uh, last year, we merged with Birmingham Bloomfield Credit Union, which was our, had previously merged with Metro North Credit Union. The three credit unions coming together had similar corporate cultures, similar philosophies on uh, community involvement and member service, which we, over the last year, we developed a new brand, a new identity, which we have unveiled July 1st, which is Michigan United Credit Union. And we're really happy to celebrate that rebranding with the Oxford community and all our branch communities. Um, we're also, right now we're running a campaign with um, a 1% cash back uh, rebate. If you get an auto loan um, between now and September 30th, up to $500. So if you're looking in the market for an auto loan, come out, come out and see us and we'll get you a set up and approved. Oh, that's awesome. Great. Awesome. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. And now we're going to go ahead and award you the certificate. Terry. Awesome. And now it's time to cut the... Well, welcome to the business community. We're so glad to have the new branding. And welcome to Oxford. Next up, we went to a Frisbee golf tournament in last June at Seymour Park. Let's watch. My name is Miles Lawrence. I'm the club president of Murder Mitten Disc Golf Club here. We've been doing this uh, club since 2011, and this is the 2021 Hands the Sun Disc Golf Tournament. It's been going really good. This is uh, it was a sellout year. We opened registration for our female divisions back on April 1st, and we gave all the females a four-day head start to register before everybody else. And then April 5th, when registration opened for all divisions, we had, I think it was nine females registered, and then in the first just under four hours, we filled the rest of the tournament, and we had it was 15, 17 people on the wait list. And it's been like that ever since. Uh, yesterday, we had a lot of people drop out last minute stuff with work, family stuff, but that's to happen. But even with that, we still had wait list people show up and we'd still sell out event and I couldn't be happier. I think this is our third year selling out this tournament and it just gets bigger and better every year, sells out faster every year. I'm just really, really stoked for the tournament this year. It's running a lot smoother for us uh, as in years in the past, just because I feel like we've kind of better prepared ourselves a little bit. 
Uh, we were able to kind of get ahead of the ball as far as uh, some things that we normally do in the past, as far as filling out different stuff, making cards, that normally happens day of. We really got to jump on it, and I just can't be happier with the disc golf community and the, the reception that we're, we're getting for this tournament. I mean, to sell out in under four hours, that's unbelievable. I figured we were going to sell out in three days, four days, but that's just way above what I could have ever hoped to have happen. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of really solid players out here today. A lot of, uh, everybody's really happy. We, we kind of went above and beyond this year with things. We normally spray our 10 meter circle for our putting rule around every basket. But this year we did 10 meter circles and our 20 meter circles. And that's just a really nice thing to do for our players. It's gives everybody a good gauge of distance when they're in by the basket. There's no more questioning. If you're in or outside circle one, it just helps things flow a lot smoother. And, uh, yeah, I think today it's really kind of showing we, uh, didn't really have a lot of backups the first round. We're right in the middle of the second round now. And yeah, I'm, we should have smooth sailing from here on out. We just had our lunch, provided lunch that we have for our players every year. We normally just grill up a bunch of hot dogs and pasta salad and chips. And yeah, I'm, I'm just really, really happy with how things are turning out. <laughs> and it should, uh, well, if things go well, it should finish well. <laughs> we'll do Hands to the Sun again next year. Uh, this year is our ninth year running this tournament. Next year will be the 10th annual running of the Hands to the Sun. Uh, we're planning on mixing things up a little bit instead of just doing a one-day a round of 24 and a round of 18, we're probably going to split it into two days, uh, split our divisions amongst those days. So instead of getting a field cap of 72, we would get a field cap of 144 players. And we can really field a lot more people. Uh, and all these people who weren't able to get in this year, they'll be able to get in next year and some. And uh, hopefully with that, we'll have our new layout done with Seymour. We'll be able to run our layouts a lot better for these divisions. And it should be... Uh, should be really nice next year <laughs> to all the people who came thank you for coming out thanks for making this another sellout year it's it's awesome i definitely appreciate it uh we're we're doing something right i mean that's that's all i can really say we're doing something right and i just i can't thank the people enough who come out year after year for this event it's it's really awesome well, that's all the time for this week. We hope you enjoyed our program. So, for our reporters, Alexis Ware and Tara Stiles, and our tech director, Dan Swise, and editor Terry Stiles, I'm Bill Service. We hope to see you again on our Community Access. Distracted drivers are responsible for nearly 2.5 million car crashes. The National Safety Council reports cell phone use while driving leads to 1.6 million crashes. The NSC reports one out of every four car accidents in the United States is caused by texting and driving. Texting or reading text takes your eyes off the road for at least five seconds. How you doing, ma'am? So if you were traveling at 55 miles per hour, you're essentially driving the length of an entire football field blindfolded. Once a driver has been distracted, it takes only three seconds for a car crash to occur.